thing and I look at the all the little details and I was like why did it say two fetuses? When I was done battle my milk I thought that my whole life was ruined Everyone telling me lies and some people calling me stupid I wasn't fucking with love Shit I was running from cute I ain't believe in relationships until I met cocaine cute What's goody in the hoodie YouTube? It's your girl Cuban and I'm back with another video. I ain't been on this channel in a long time. But you know, I've been on that good old TikTok. And one of my videos decided to blow up a little bit. So, I said that I was going to make a YouTube video, which is this video that you're watching right now. Boo boo. Yes. And today, I'm going to be talking about the depo shot and pregnancy. Two things that probably shouldn't be in the same sentence together, but they are, and here we are today. This is my daughter. Her name is Nyla Mui. Say hey, baby. Say hey. And I'm going to be telling you about how I got pregnant with her, how I got pregnant with the twins, and uh, basically answering some questions that you guys left in the comments on my TikTok. My TikTok is Sway Kisses. I'm going to put it right here on the screen. And yeah, let's get into the video. I'm going to start off by telling the story times about how I got pregnant with my daughter. I was 17 when I got pregnant with my daughter and I had her at 18 years old. So, yeah, we all know the birds and the bees, the flowers and the trees is how you conceive a child. And I was participating in those activities. And now I have a tiny human. She was born May 3rd, 2020. And how I knew I was pregnant with her, I have very regular cycles, very regular cycles. So, you know, instantly when I missed my period, I was like, oh, no, something ain't right. Something ain't right. What's going on? And me being a very smart person, you know, being logical, I was like, yeah, let me, let me tell her daddy to go get a pregnancy test. Because this, <laughs> it's not sitting well with me. It's not sitting right in my soul, my spirit. So, you know, long story short, boom, took the pregnancy test, and I had this little bean bobblehead child in, inside of me. Now, being pregnant with her, um, I was really sick. I had really bad morning sickness, uh, throwing up, sleeping all through the day, being up at night. Like, I couldn't sleep at night. I was just sleeping the day, be up at night. Um, I was craving a whole lot of salty stuff like i wanted pickles sour skittles uh anything that was sour or like sour two together i wanted it but yeah having her i can't really say much y'all because it was kind of a blur it's like i don't really remember because everything happens so bad. Yeah, okay so with these babies which i just found out or babies and not baby which is kind of crazy because i'm six Six months, five, you know, this is weird how pregnancy timeline works. But technically, I'm six months. And um, it's very weird how I found out that there's two instead of one. Because every ultrasound appointment I went to, there was one baby. One big, giant, mm. melon-headed baby. Because all my babies got my big old head. Except for her, she got her daddy cranium. And I'm looking. I'm sitting down on the couch, you know, chilling. We watching Coco mm. Melon. And... I get a message from my my chart. My doctors use to notify you know when you have new test results, uh, appointments, you know things like that. So it popped up on my screen. It was like new test results, and I was like, okay, maybe this is uh something about my kidneys or you know something else. I don't know. So I opened it, and it was uh the analysis back from the screening from the baby that I thought was there because this baby, the biggest baby that I saw, hey. Anyways, this baby, the big baby that I saw, has a white spot on her heart. And they were just trying to, you know, check for any uh, signs of Down syndrome. Uh, the genetic testing came back fine, you know, with the blood work. And they did an ultrasound. And I have another blood test coming up in my next appointment. So, uh, that's why I had to get that ultrasound. So, I open my app and I look at the results from the ultrasound, you know, trying to make sure everything's okay. And I'm scrolling and I look at the all the little details, and I was like, "Why did it say two fetuses? Not uno, but dos. Dos fetuses." I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> these doctors are on drugs. They're they're smoking. They're smoking crack." 
<laughs> so I text my mama. Hey, mama. <laughs> so I text my mom, and I was like, the doctors are smoking crack. That's literally what I told her. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna show you the, the little screenshot right here. And I text my mom, and I was like, these doctors are smoking crack because why I just say two fetuses? And she called me, and she was like, you for real? I'm like, why would I be playing? Like, why would I be playing? Like, I'm sitting up here trying to process in my brain how all this time. We only seen one big gigantic baby. So I don't really know what's going on. Hopefully they can tell me more when I go to my next appointment, which is February 2nd. And I'll vlog that if y'all want me to vlog it. You know, I'll try to sneak and record because, you know, we got hip laws. And they be trying to keep you from recording, but I'm still got to do that. Now I'm going to answer some questions that you guys left on the TikTok. But first, I want to talk about Depo because a lot of people are asking me about Depo. Depo and any other form of hormonal birth control will always not be very good for you. Simply because it is a hormonal birth control. Like, I've seen a couple of girls in the comments saying, you know, oh, uh, I get my period off and on with my birth control. It doesn't have to be Depo, you know, anything. Any birth control will make you, you know, it's going to change your body. So they were like, I get my period on and off with uh, birth control. Like, why is my period coming and going? It'll do that. It just depends on how your body reacts to the birth control that you have. Any birth control can make you not have periods for a while, and then boom, you have a period for a whole month. It's just how birth control works. Personally, I do not believe that birth control is good for your body because periods are how your body, you know, regulates everything, you know, cleans out the unneeded tissue, you know, the eggs that you don't use. That's why I don't really think birth control is, you know, great for you, especially at a young age, because I've seen people say that Depo has made them infertile. Like, they get off Depo. I think if they tell you when you get off Depo, you can't get pregnant for like a year, um, a couple of months or a year after, but some people get pregnant instantly once they get off of birth control because your body, everybody's body is different. Nobody can give you a definite answer to a question you have because your body is not the next person's body. And that's why I want to educate a lot of young girls through my social media platforms because there's so many young girls out here, you know, just on birth control to prevent a pregnancy and their doctors aren't really explaining to them, you know, the side effects and the long-term effects or their moms might not even, their mothers might not even be educated on it because somebody might not have told her. They might have just got on it to prevent pregnancy. I wanna try to do more educating on these topics. But yes, uh, any kind of birth control can make your periods come and go. That's why on birth control, a lot of people get pregnant on it they don't know. Because they think, oh, you know, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding a little bit, so I'm just spotting for my birth control. You know, I get a period every once in a while on my birth control, so. You know, that's what it is. Whole time, they wouldn't know till they go for the next shot. Anyways, somebody asked, are you scared of being a young mom? Not really. Because I don't see the difference in having a child at 30 versus having a child at my age. You're never going to be prepared to be a mom because parenting does not come with a handbook. Being a certain age will not make you ready for a child because I've seen people who are way older than me, <laughs> who are way older than me, and they don't even really know how to parent. They're well or they're not very good parents. It's all about the maturity level that you have for yourself. You can be 40 years old and still act like a teenager. You could be 18, 20 years old and act like a 40 year old, have the mindset of a 40 year old. It's all about up here in here like how you conduct yourself because being a young mom or being a mom in general a lot of people think oh you know babies are expensive babies cost too much diapers wipes formula boom 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 that's all they hear that's all they worry about they be like the money part it's not the money part that's hard it's the physical emotional and mental parts of being a mom you know you have a whole person that you now have to take care of. You're with them from the time that they wake up to the time that they go to sleep, you know, they cry, they experience emotions because they don't know anything or they don't know any better. So, you know, you have to deal with that. Uh, the parts of, you know, when you're tired 
and you can't sit down or you can't, you know, take a breather because baby needs you. It's about those parts that you really need to focus on. Mm. Money is money. Either you have it or you don't. Some days you up, some days you down. That's just a, I, that's just a, you know, a firsthand thing. It's about are you mentally prepared to raise another person? Are you emotionally prepared to raise another person? Are you physically able to take care of another human? Because I know some days with my daughter, with me being pregnant now, some days with her, you know, she's very clingy. Some days she wants to play a lot. Some days she's tired. On those clingy days or on those super active days, I get tired. I want to take a break. I can't take a break until nap time or bedtime. So once I get time alone to myself, I remember a couple of times where I've cried simply for being overwhelmed with the physical activities of having her. She's only eight months old and she's a very active baby. And I still, I get tired. Cause she's learning to crawl. She's learning to walk. So everything that she sees, she's interested in. So I have to keep up with her. So do I think being a young mom is hard or scary? Certain, in certain aspects, yes. In other aspects, not so much. But it, it varies from person to person. I cannot, I can't speak for everybody else. I can only speak for myself. I said, were you, were you getting your period? Like I said in the beginning, everybody's body is different. Some people have no periods on birth control. Some people have irregular cycles on birth control. I was one of the people who were having it like for a certain amount of time and then none at all. It just varies from person to person. First of all, I just want to say the period was not the sign that made me think I was pregnant. It was not the sign that made me think I was pregnant at all. It was the sickness that was making me think something was wrong. So when I was um, experiencing, you know, being very sick, that's when I went to the doctors and boom. It was what it was. Somebody said, what is Depo? Depo is a form of birth control. It is in a shot form. You can get in your arm, your hip, your butt cheek. You can switch it up if you want to. You ain't got to get in the same place every time. Somebody said, are twin symptoms different than with your first child? And did you have a feeling it was twins? Okay, so this is the crazy thing about it. With my daughter, like I said, I knew right away before I even started experiencing symptoms of like pregnancy to the point where it made me wonder if I was pregnant. I figured I was pregnant because I missed my period. That was the first sign for me because my periods are very regular and on time. And I was not on birth control when I got pregnant with her. But before that, my periods were very regular and on time. So that's how I knew I was most likely pregnant, you know. Um, now with these babies, I wasn't sick at all, like, in the form of having morning sickness or being extremely sick from pregnancy like I was with my daughter. I didn't have that. I felt totally normal. Uh, I still feel really normal. I don't even really have morning sickness. I don't have a lot of gas, a lot of bloating, any of that. Like, I'm just, I really feel regular. The only problems or symptoms that I have is being really tired or, um, having swollen you know legs swollen ankles swollen feet that's pretty much it and headaches i had a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of headaches and it was the worst worst headaches ever somebody said what are the signs of pregnancy i'm going to give you some basic things that i have google searched when i got pregnant with her before i got pregnant with her you know some basic things that i google searched and that you can google search to probably give you an indication that you might be pregnant if this is why you asked the question uh one the immediate s sign of pregnancy is a missed period if you miss your period by probably i want to say more than three days it's best to take a test you can't just sit up and like guess and wonder oh am i pregnant the best way to know if you're pregnant is to go buy a test um another thing is you can be very sick very morning morning sickness makes you feel very nauseous you'll feel very very nauseous you might have to throw up your mouth might water a lot um 
having headaches, being very tired, sleeping a lot. You may notice yourself eating more. I know with her, I ate sandwiches. Like, I was so addicted to making sandwiches and eating them. And when I had first found out, I was just making sandwiches back to back and eating sandwiches. Or toast. I got really addicted to eating toast. Design. Um, peeing a lot. Using the bathroom more often. Now, this usually happens... When you're further along, when baby gets bigger and you actually know, you'll be peeing more because the baby's weighing more and now baby is sitting on your bladder. Um, those are really the basic signs of pregnancy that I can think of off the top of my head. Spotting is another uh, sign of pregnancy. Now, being on birth control, if you do get the irregular cycles, you may not know right off the bat. Spotting is more of a light pink to brown color, and it won't be a lot. Spotting can happen for an hour, then stop. Or it can happen for a couple of days and then stop. So a lot of people who get pregnant may think they're having a short period when it's really pregnancy spotting. And spotting comes from implantation. And implantation is when the baby basically, you know, burrows into the uterus and implants there, so that's another sign of pregnancy. Somebody asked, are the twins okay because of the birth control and can being on birth control and being pregnant harm the baby? Pregnant, what is it pregnant? Pregnant harm the baby. Um, the From my knowledge, the baby is fine. The babies are fine. The, this is too much for me to have <laughs> going on. It's like, I can't really give answers on the other baby because I didn't know there was another baby. So, yeah, uh, the big baby that I know of is fine, doing very well, very healthy, strong heartbeat, you know, very, very good. Uh, once you find out that you're pregnant, they are going to stop it. Like, you can't get your birth control while you're pregnant. That's not how it works. They're not, they don't give you the shot while you're pregnant. Uh, you can get it after you deliver. Somebody asked, how old was my daughter when I got pregnant? My daughter was turning five months when I found out I was pregnant. I found out I was pregnant August. Why do I keep saying pregnant? Pregnant. I'm so ghetto. Oh, my gosh. I found out I was pregnant August 27th. I have a screenshot of some pregnancy tests that I took that her dad brought me. And I'll put that up there on the screen with the date. August 27th is when I found out at home. Somebody asked, do twins run in my family? Twins do not run in my family, but her dad is a triplet. Crazy, right? Yeah. The, they're the only set of uh, double or well, triples that I know of on his side of the family. So, yes, her father is a triplet. I do not have twins or multiples in my family. Somebody asked me for advice on preparing for baby before delivery or arrival of the baby. What I can say that's probably important the most is um, some advice I can give is to not buy a ton of newborn diapers. Do not buy a ton of newborn clothing. The baby is going to grow very fast. Very, very fast. And you're going to be stuck with a bunch of newborn diapers that you don't even use and a bunch of clothes that you will probably eventually end up giving away if you don't plan on having more children. The only good thing for me is I'm having daughters and I have newborn diapers left over and I have a bunch of new, probably like two, three boxes of newborn baby clothing that's just sitting around from her. Um, Another thing I can say is make sure you're getting rest while you're pregnant because once baby gets here, you're not going to sleep unless you have help. You're not going to sleep because uh, I think it's a mom thing, you know, when you're kind of nervous about bringing a baby home, you, you're kind of paranoid. So you don't really want to sleep heavy. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll be waking up every certain amount of time to check on baby make sure baby's still breathing i know i did i was very paranoid and i wanted to make sure every hour every couple hours that i'm waking up and that she's breathing i was so paranoid and i might get hate for this especially because of the audience is tiktok my baby had an in-bed bassinet so i was sleeping very close to the edge of the bed with a separate thin blanket and i had my cover and my sheets tucked in so like it couldn't move and I had a thin blanket that I was sleeping with. And I slept spaced out from her. And she slept in her in-bed bassinet right there next to me. And I understand a lot of people may not support co-sleeping, you know, to each its own. I understand that uh, some mothers have lost their babies to co-sleeping. 
and I'm very sorry that that happened to them, but me personally, I was more comfortable having an in-bed bassinet for my baby because she was right next to me. On top of that, I had stitches, and I also developed preeclampsia from pregnancy, so I was home with stitches, not being able to, you know, move around a lot, and also being very sick, having, you know, um, dizzy spells, etc., from having preeclampsia. Um, another thing I can say for preparing after you have a baby, um, make sure you, make sure you prepare the bottles at night, um, so you can have them in reach to you instead of having to get up, you know, make another bottle or if you breastfeed, it'll be easier that way. Somebody asked, how do I feel about having twins? Well, I mean, I'm not really bothered by it. Uh, the, her dad, the dad wanted twins really bad. He was... The first pregnancy with her, he was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be twins. My grandma was like, twins, you know, you better hope you don't end up with three twins, triplets. Woo -woo. So, I mean, it's all good over here. I'm not really too stressed out about having twins. I'll probably be stressed out when it's time to deliver because, you know, I got to I gotta put two babies on my coochie. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm not too worried about it, you know. I'm basically done. I have my little family already, so I'm done. If I could get my tubes tied, I would. I don't want more children. Somebody asked how far along am I? I am six months and three days, I think, I believe. I don't want to say what's wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen. But six months, three days. Somebody asked, does breastfeeding hurt? I can actually give a tiny amount of advice on this because with my daughter, I did try breastfeeding before I switched to bottle because when I was in the hospital after I gave birth to her, I was not producing milk until after I went home. So I'm in the hospital and... You know, I'm trying to breastfeed, and she's latching, but I'm not producing any milk. So, she's, uh, you know, latching, and she's sucking, and it is the most painful thing that I, me personally, have ever experienced besides birth. It hurts. Your nipples will crack. They will bleed, and it's just going to be very weird because you're going to be leaking milk everywhere. And, yeah, your shirt's wet. You got to get by booby patches for it so you don't leak milk and waste milk. You got to pump. To get the milk out is very weird and uncomfortable, in my opinion. And I didn't like it, and that's why I didn't continue to breastfeed. Now, with these babies, I may attempt. I may not directly breastfeed, but I may pump. The more the merrier. You know, she's on formula, but you know, I have that supply saved up. So, it's just, you know, it's, that's what we're going to do. Somebody asks, was I on birth control with my first baby? No, I was not. Now, the thing about it is... Um, I lost my virginity when I was 16 years old. I'm about to be 19 years old. Um, their dad was my first ever actual, actual boyfriend. You know, I was going to his mom's house, spending time with him, you know, spending time with him or whatever. And that's when I was sexually active. So... So, no, I was not on per, uh, birth control with my first baby because I what, what I look like asking my mama for some birth control. And that's another bad thing about growing up as a black child or a black girl having parents. You know, they don't want you to actually take precautions to prevent pregnancy besides condoms. You can't actually talk to them about birth control. And I was not about to ask my mama for birth control so I get my head knocked in because she'd be like, what you need birth control for? You have sex. Now we went finna risk it. <laughs> we went finna risk it. That's why I ended up <laughs> with my daughter. Cause uh we were not using condoms, which was not a very smart decision. But you know, if you're having sex and you're not of age to where it's your parents can't tell you that you're not allowed to have sex, use condoms if you cannot get birth control. I don't care if he say he can't feel it. He lying. He's lying. I don't care if he's saying he's too big for it. That's another lie. I've seen a girl put her whole foot in a condom. Don't let these little boys play you, girl. Because they just, it's, don't don't let them play you. That's all I got to say. Don't let them play you. Tell him, wrap, wrap up his weenie or he can't go meet the genie, period, point blank. Yes. Somebody asked how bad was labor. Basically, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning because I thought I had to poop. Did not have to poop. Walked back to my room, sat down on the bed, and that's when the contractions started hitting me. I felt the contractions at the top of my stomach, and I knew her contractions because it was the day before her due date. She came the day before she was supposed to be born, but she ended up coming May 3rd. 
I started experiencing contractions. I crawled on the floor to my mother's room and I told her, you need to call my grandmother while I was in tears, balled up on the ground, rocking because the contractions were hurting that bad. So uh, I get to the hospital. They have to check to see how far dilated you are. So they were shoving their fingers up my vajayjay to check my cervix. And that was very painful because I was having contractions. Um, They put me into the room where I would be delivering. And I kept telling them, I feel like I'm sitting on something. I feel like I'm sitting on something. And they were checking me and I was, uh, they were checking me and I was dilating very fast, very quick. Um, I ended up getting the epidural. And after I got the epidural, I felt like I smoked about 15, 12 million blunts, okay? Could not feel my legs. Couldn't move my legs. Because <laughs> when it was time to give birth, the nurse was like, I need you to put your leg up on the thing. I was like, ma'am. I can't move my leg. She had to pick my leg up for me. So if you decide to get an epidural, you're not going to feel anything below the waist. Them contractions, they're going to stop. until Up, up until the time where you're ready to push, then they march start back. But you'll still be done. Uh, the only thing I felt when I was pushing my daughter out was pressure. I didn't even actually know if I was pushing because I couldn't feel anything. I was just, you know trying my hardest to push and they were telling me you know you're doing great you're doing great so i just kept doing what i was doing and then about five six pushes later boom baby's here so yeah uh it's different for everybody your birth experience might not be the same as my birth experience because everybody's bodies are different i will continue to say that your experience will be your experience i can just speak for myself somebody asked have i seen both babies on the ultrasound yet no i have not I don't understand why I did not see both babies on ultrasound or why both babies weren't picked up on ultrasound until now. But no, I haven't seen babies. So hopefully in my next appointment, I'll get some ultrasounds and some videos so y'all can see babies. I said, what happens after you give birth? Um, I don't know what you mean by after you give birth. Like if you mean the routine that the doctors do. But after you give birth, um, they clean baby off, wrap baby up in a, a swaddle, put a hat on baby, bring baby to you for skin to skin. Um, they have to push the placenta out of you because you don't deliver the placenta when you deliver the baby. So the doctor will come push on your stomach to get the placenta out. In some rare cases, the doctor may have to stick his arm up your vagina to pull it out if it got stuck or something like that. Which, like I said, in rare cases. Uh, yes, that does hurt. It is, it is a little painful to have someone push on your stomach after you've given birth to a baby. Um, they get you cleaned up. They switch you over to the room that you'll be staying in with baby and your partner, you know, whoever's there as your support, uh, support person. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much basically it. After that, it's basically just recovery. Somebody asked, how is my body doing being pregnant with twins after not being pregnant and then being pregnant, you know, with my daughter and then taking time off? Um... The only thing that I can say is that I'm very tired, very low on energy. I have been sick, not due to pregnancy. I am, um, my doctors told me that I'm showing signs of developing kidney disease and I'm on medication for that, that I take every single day. Um, I developed that from having preeclampsia very bad. My blood pressure got really, really out of control, got really sick, was having a lot of dizzy spells, uh, shortness of breath, basically, you know, falling out. One of my appointments went to the checkup you know they were basically saying i had high amounts of protein in my urine and i had blood in my urine so that's how they uh came to the conclusion that i'm developing kidney disease so i've been i have my good days and my bad days some days i'm very sick and tired some days i'm normal like now i can get up and i can do things it just depends on the day uh hopefully the medication makes it better but you know Somebody asked, how does the dad feel about me having babies? <laughs> He's fine with it. I don't know what else to say. If y'all want me to do a video with him, a Q&A with him, leave some questions in the comments because I'm telling y'all, that video will be hilarious. because he, like, That video will be hilarious because that boy, he is funny. And we'll do a video for y'all. Like, Give me video ideas. I really hope y'all like the content that I'm putting out. I really hope that y'all like this video. And I am very, very, very grateful for all the love that I got in the comments. I didn't expect the comments to look how they looked. I expected to get hate. 
whole lot of hate like dang you so young having all these kids ooh, whoop, whoop. that's what i was afraid of very scared that i was gonna get judged but y'all didn't judge me y'all were just actually being very supportive sharing y'all stories so many people in the comments told me that they got pregnant or depo so many people so many older women i'm so glad that the older women were giving me advice and encouraging words and not discouraging me like i've seen so many other girls get hate for but you know it's life even if i do get hate it is what it is people are going to talk about you until the day that you die and that's fine you know you ain't paying my bills you ain't feeding my kids you ain't feed me baby because uh, food is like you ain't feed me I ain't worried about it. just say what you want to say period point blank but yeah i like thank y'all guys so much for the support um this is going to be the end of the video i've been talking for so long and I don't want to drag this out when I'm just answering basic questions and giving you some insight on how my birth was with my daughter and how the pregnancy is now with the twins. But yeah, um, this is pretty much the end. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to become a part of the Cuban gang. If you want to become a Cuban link, hit that subscribe button. Press that bell so you can get notified when I post. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.